that's the good stuff right here. Hard, soft literature. I mean, sort of, kind of. I tell you what, I think I'll think I'll check it out. You know, I'm not normally one to destroy books, but so I'm just kind of big for it. Hi, folks, Fruit and Doggy here to do another book discussion, and today I am discussing the first book out of what's called Spider World: The Desert, written by Colin Wilson. It is just around 160 pages long. And this was published all the way back in 1987. <laughs> and I should mention that with this series, it seems like it was a six book series ultimately. And it actually took the first three books and compiled it into its own uh, larger work. I think it's called The Tower. And... What happened with this book series seemingly is that the author <coughs> was writing other works in between and tabled this book series for a period of time, perhaps after the first three, and then they returned to the series to, fin <coughs> to excuse me, finish it off. And as I was reading about the book series and learning more about it, unfortunately, it seems that the first book out of the series, the one I have, <coughs> is where it was at its best. It's where it peaked, and then it just slowly declined. It seemed as if the first few were still decently well accepted, uh, was, were seen as positive books, but whatever weaknesses he was displaying in this first <coughs> excuse me, novel, it seemed like it only compounded over time. Which is unfortunate, because as I finished this story, it ends at a fairly tense moment. It's fairly abrupt. No reason, <coughs> excuse me, a reasonable stopping point. But it definitely had me curious about what would be coming up next. <coughs> mm. But anyways, I am going to read the general summary, as I you always do. And part of it is covered up by a sticker, so I'm just going to start in the middle. But it says... The Death Lord spiders rule the earth, hurting humans like cattle. A few tribes of free men and women dwell in the desert, hiding underground, living by their wits. Now, a young warrior named Nial begins an epic search for the secrets of the spiders' secrets, which might give humanity a fighting chance against the overlords. <coughs> and I will mention that I think what the author do, did reasonably well in this book was create an interesting setting, an interesting world, but with some of the different concepts and ideas that were introduced, I don't know that he explored them quite enough, and I don't know even throughout the rest of the series if he ever really gives a full explanation for what's taking place, <coughs> excuse me, and I'll just go into a little bit more detail about the setting. As the summary suggests, and what it uh, illustrates is that human beings have lost their primacy in the world, spiders are now at the pinnacle, and when it says the death spiders, death lord spiders, I thought they were just called the Death Spiders, actually, to be entirely honest. But anyways, <coughs> they... Hmm, that cough threw off my train of thought. I have to apologize. Oh, their size. They are uh, at least human-sized, if not even larger than that. And one of the leaders, a giant tur if I remember right, giant tarantula with 100 eyes, with oddly enough the name of Cheb, he was a massive spider, even larger than the norm. I think I remember somewhere in, uh, describing that giant spider that 
it could, you know, in theory, its uh, fangs were so large that it could, you know, t uh, do significant damage to like a tree, for instance. Just so massive of a creature. And that's what I, uh, the story hints at and has different implications for why there's these giant spires running around. Uh, but <laughs> the story basically just kind of plunges you right into the middle of things. You're following Neil's perspective, and his family has been out in the desert since before he was born. And even before that, at one point, humans and the giant spiders were more or less at war with each other. But at that time, humans still had more normal settlements. Uh, basically, they were living in societies or civilizations. Per the norm, it didn't go into a ton of detail about what their technology was like, how either advanced or limited it was. But still more <coughs> per our normal standard than what uh, they've been reduced to. And seemingly what happened is, and this is something I found to be a bit hard to swallow, is that one human leader, because of uh, a conflict with another civilization, another group, he basically lost his love interest, and he got butt hurt. And he ran off to the spiders, promising to share with them more information so that the spiders could gain that upper hand and be dominant over humans. And all he wanted in return was that the spiders would wipe out that civilization that he was uh, in competition with and lost his love to. <coughs> I understand that human beings can be quite dastardly, cowardly, they can do some really rotten things, but I did find it a little hard to believe that a, a person would betray all of humanity. I just find that hard to swallow. And to go into a little bit more detail, it, the advantage that the spiders have, and aside from you know being at about equivalent size to human beings, is when spiders build their webs, instead of merely waiting for prey to go into the webs just ipso facto as it happens by chance, by accident, the spiders are actually able to use a form of a psychic ability to influence that prey and to direct it into the web. And, <coughs> excuse me. And so the death spiders, they have fine tuned that ability, but the issue is in the way the book describes it, it doesn't work on human beings because of the large gap between how human beings behave, the way our minds work, our values, our interests are just so bizarre, so alien to spiders that they didn't really know, they couldn't comprehend the human mind, and so they couldn't control humans. And then that is what the... Uh, traitor, the Benedict Arnold, basically handed to him was uh, sacrificing his own people so that the spider could, the spider's leader could, over a long period of time, learn and pick apart the human mind and the human psyche until it's like, ah, this is how this all works. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And I should, uh, Clarify in case this wasn't already obvious, but it wasn't just a single strand uh, species of spider 
that is now man-sized, seemingly, I don't know if literally all insects, but many insects, uh, instead of being, you know, measured in centimeters slash inches, are now vastly larger. And there's no rationale given for what caused that, what happened. And what's interesting about this setting is that seemingly only insects uh, gained in size, but other critters, you know, crocodiles, reptiles, birds, perhaps birds got some increase in size. I remember they hunted a bird once, but... No, it, it seemed like it's only insects got that got this size boost. It didn't mention, you know, large canaries that were now huge, large as an eagle, or dogs that were, okay, elephant size would be quite uh, absurd, but you sort of get the idea. And it mentioned, for instance, the idea that the spiders wiped out tigers and i guess any other large animal that could be seen as a potential threat or a rival so all the big cats i suppose in theory elephants rhinoceroses but again it's not exactly clear where in this world if it is just our planet um they're actually located i have no idea it could be Arizona, or it could be Egypt, for all I know, to be entirely frank. You know, they are in a desert. They are fairly close to... It's called the Delta, so it's more of a lush area. More uh, water. I don't know if exactly if it's forested or not, or a meadow. Again, I really don't know deltas too well. It might be more marshy, to be entirely honest. That is not entire. That's not incredibly far from their current location. Maybe several days walk away, and then that seemed to be um, only so much further away would then be where the spiders are currently inhabiting, and that is bas They basically just took over a human city. Neil and his family are basically desperately trying to eke out survival in the desert. They live in a cave. They have scant water resources. Food is hard to come by. Sort of what you would expect from a desert environment. But the benefit is, but the benefit is that they're far away from the city that the spiders live in. And the spiders... They hate humans... But they're not so obsessed that they're going to comb the entire desert minutely to uh, completely eradicate this small band of humans. And what the summary already indicated is that the spiders basically want to subjugate humans. They don't actually want them all dead because... I'm not actually 100% positive about this because I know that it says that human beings are their cattle and basically they keep humans alive, uh, have them reproduce so that they can uh, suck out their blood, somewhat of a vampire colony style. But I don't understand why they don't just use other prey mammals, you know, for instance, uh, cattle for you know because cattle could just live off of grass and i would think that'd be in some ways easier to manage than humans who have somewhat of a more restricted diet they need fruit or vegetables they can't just uh digest grass <laughs> they can't graze on the farmland so i don't know it seems like lambs and goats and sheep or not sheep but cows etc would be just as good if not better but oh as they're trying to survive in the desert 
I should also mention that uh, they do send, they call them balloon spiders, that they just have some sort of, I'm assuming, like, silk balloon that they uh, fly around on to do patrols. And so they do, the humans out in the desert do have to be mindful of that, but it's a, since they're so far out, since they're so remote, it's a fairly minor threat. And I say that to a small, I say that with a caveat because <clears throat> there was something that didn't make exact sense to me. Because the spiders, they don't want to be, her they don't want to go to the hassle of uh, getting these humans under control. But they are still patrolling. They, <clears throat> they would want to destroy them or uh, contain them. But <clears throat> they don't know exactly where they are. And but as they're patrolling, what they're doing is with their somewhat of a psychic ability, they're sort of scanning ter the terrain and they are basically looking for fear. And so if they encounter something that has a fear response. As a, their kind of prying eye is scanning and what they're doing when they're scanning is sending out like a f an ominous will you know sort of a a bloodthirst and if they get a fear response then they know something's up and the more frightened somebody is in response then <coughs> the more the spider can kind of cue in and determine their exact location. And though the humans living out in the desert have uh, learned how to control their fear, that if they panic, then it becomes a self-defeating cycle and they'll just basically kill them. It's suicide. But if they're able to calm down, bring themselves under control, then they're perfectly fine. But here's my problem is that as the scan goes over the humans, it's stated that it's an inherent reaction for them to have some, like a little bit more than just being startled. It's like, <gasps> you know, it's just an innate reaction. And so even though that wouldn't be enough for the spider to know, it's like, okay, I can't determine where they are. I would think that'd be enough to tell the spider that it's like, oh, human beings are right here. And so since they're living, the humans are living in a cave, they don't, they're not uh, migratory. They're not shifting around. They live in a settled area. So I would think that uh, basically once they had that initial reaction that they could just it's like, okay, we know that in this general area, a few square miles, the humans are here. Instead of sending out these blind patrols, then we can just cordon off the area, scan it, and be done with it. I don't... It didn't really explain to enough ex detail how much fear or how long that the spiders needed to pick up that sensation to know that it wasn't like a false flag and because they're responding to fear it have to come from some animal or something you know semi-sentient so i don't know how <coughs> it could be false flagged overall i thought it was an interesting story an interesting concept but it is disappointing to find out that as the series progressed it seemed that the writing became weaker and even though this left me off on somewhat of a tantalizing uh, situation where I wanted to learn more and see what was going to happen next it seems that if I were to keep pursuing the story that it wouldn't get better and so when it have and it seems like it the series itself doesn't have a satisfactory ending and honestly I don't know where it could go that it would have a satisfactory ending that wouldn't be 
completely... I'm going to use the word asinine because <coughs> he set up such an unbalanced system that there's not really a logical way for the humans to fight back. At this point, uh, all human civilizations have been reduced to nothing. In essence, I don't know what the entire planet is like in this setting, but at least in this region, the spiders are triumphant. They are dominating the humans completely. <coughs> That's what I'm getting at. Human beings have lost their edge. The number of humans that are free are well under a hundred. It doesn't give a population for the spider society, but it's not constrained. So I would expect it to be at least in the hundreds, especially when they're able to send out a few spiders on regular patrol in a few areas. <coughs> they have dominant psychic abilities. And I should mention that humans have psychic abilities as well but it's not highly uh refined it's not honed it's not uh developed and it seems that everybody has them their abilities are pale in comparison to the spiders who outnumber them and the humans don't have any technology to make up for that discrepancy so they're lower population they're weaker psychic abilities they don't have technology so i don't know how this could ever get into um a situation where the humans are able to fight back to resist to regrain regain any ground to even be uh, at a point where they're fighting on equal terms with the spiders, let alone to overthrow them. And so I think this is an interesting dynamic, but this also demonstrates how once you sort of set yourself up and write yourself into uh, such stacked odds that unless you use a MacGuffin, unless you use a secret weapon tucked away for hundreds of years and a small band of warriors are going to go on an epic quest and revive the gods or turn on the cannon, whatever plot device and whatever is suitable for your setting, it, it just doesn't work out. And uh, those sorts of plot devices, they're tolerable, but they're very contrived and they're very tired by this point. And so I, uh, it seemed like that's where the story would be heading in the long term, is that there was some sort of highly advanced, incredibly uh, sophisticated technology that was nigh indestructible and completely sealed off that the spiders were in the city that the spiders are living in were trying to get access to or destroy and they couldn't do it so you know the foreshadowing there is if they're going to be defeated it's in that tower neil his family some small band of humans would likely gain access and overthrow the spiders I would admit that as far as uh, sort of science fiction goes, I haven't read a ton of books or seen a lot of books that address giant insects. It's somewhat of a niche. So if this is something you never encountered, from what I've seen from reviews, the first three books, the ones that were summarized into the tower, it might be worth reading. But otherwise, I think the the entire whole, the six part aspect of it could probably just be a pass. But otherwise, that's been this book discussion. Um, do apologize if I was all over the place in this case. 
I'm not sure why that would be the case, especially with such a short book. Maybe I'm just being verbose from the last few books I've covered that have... It's reconditioned me to talk too much, and I already talk too much, so... Apologies, but have a good one, folks. And as always, fruit and doggy.